Hi, this is Shady and I have a black belt from Christian Tissier. You can see here in the photo um, with my Japanese certificate. I'm also a lifetime member in the Hanbu Dojo. That's like being a lifetime member in the Kodokan if you're a judoka, but it's like for Aikido. And I had the honor to train with Sensei Tissier. Um, I'm still in his club. Uh, but I changed discipline, you know my story, but I'm telling you this because I feel like I am personally qualified to talk to you about this subject. Um, Aikido is a very misunderstood martial art. Um, you see this controversy, oh it doesn't work, uh, you have the Aikido, the Aikidoka saying, um, it's not meant for the octagon, so I'm not gonna bother show up for the fight or, you know, uh, or they say a very good argument that um, Krav Maga is not fit for the octagon yet. It's very uh, functional. Um, yes, but Krav Maga, for example, they use... Uh, well, first, I just want to say that on the surface, this seems like a very legitimate argument, but when we look into Krav Maga, we can see that they use headgear, uh, protective gear, uh, they use live resistance when they're drilling their... Uh... I really don't know how this uh, martial art goes, but uh, I would say that when they are drilling, they use live resistance. It's not like formal sparring with rules because it's for self-defense. Uh, it's also for the um, IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, etc, etc. So there's a lot of merit to it. It's not like just Aikido and just like doing kata. Um, but it is very misunderstood in so many ways. Uh, not just for the people that don't practice Aikido. It's very easy to look on the outside of things and just mock and point fingers and laugh. But I'm talking about people who are actually practicing Aikido that do not understand what it's about. First, let's talk about the founder himself, Morihai. Ueshiba. Morihai Ueshiba was in the army. He grew up training martial arts. Uh, he was a very small man, uh, a meter and a half, I believe. And he was in the infantry. So in the Russian-Japanese war, he fought in the infantry. So the when Oshepkov, when I talked about Oshepkov in my Sambo video and I talked about how the Japanese established an existence in his hometown, it's because of that war that O Sensei himself fought in it. So he was in infantry, he did hand to hand combat in the battlefield. So this man has probably killed a lot of people. Uh, after retiring from the army, he also trained the military in martial arts. He was very gifted in several arts, uh, several forms of jujitsu, uh, kenjutsu, bojutsu, you know, the staff, uh, the knife, the tanto, etc, etc. So he was a very skilled man who went to war and tested his skills on the battlefield. So you can say that, so he's not going to create something that just doesn't work. You would be correct, but... Let's take a look at Aikido for what it is and try to analyze the stuff that he said and to see whether the claims are the claims that Aikido people claim today. Um, first of all, uh, to, he had like several visions. Um, he became religious more and more as he got older. Uh, he became very... Uh, invested in Shintoism, it's very spiritual, uniting the gods, the heavens and the earth with mankind, reconciling the world, it's about peace. Uh, you would see him under the waterfall doing these breathing and meditational practices. Uh, but that, that's, that's just the thing, if you read the quotes uh, from uh, the compiled sayings of his in the book the art of peace you would see that for example when he talks about blending the spirits uh, uniting heaven and earth and then you look at the techniques of aikido and say you know it's about harmony it's about blending with what someone is giving you etc he's talking about creating this peaceful 
personality. He's not talking about creating someone who's too deadly for MMA. So if you take an in-depth look of what he's teaching, he's not teaching you how to fight. He's actually teaching you to be a better person through these practices. For example, when I say jujitsu teaches you to be calm in the most difficult situations, it's because you're training to be calm when someone is, is like a purple belt and he's, you know, twice your size and he's mounting you. You learn after many times to stay calm and then you take this mindset outside into life situations. The same with Aikido, you know, whatever he's giving you, you work with, etc. And me personally, I experienced that myself. I talked about this in my, how I achieved my academic goals through Aikido or something like that. Um, it was basically try to deal with whatever uh, life gives you, kind of like Aikido, blend with it, harmony, etc. He wasn't telling you uh, this is the best self-defense ever, uh, it's too deadly uh, when you're a third done then you start to know what Aikido is about and you're gonna be very deadly he never said any of those things he talked about truly becoming a warrior in a garden this man has seen war all his life martial arts all his life and then he just wanted to quit you know have you ever met someone that's uh, a soldier has been a soldier in their life you know a relative an old relative uh, when he came back from war after seeing all this stuff he became like a monk or a hermit i'm sure some of you know someone like this uh, i know a lot of people after the civil war uh, in their country they became priests or they went to the monastery this is what he was trying to do after all this time he went and he said that, you know, I've known war and martial arts all my life. Let's do with these practices that are designed to kill, etc., but create peace. This is what he was trying to do. He never said, you're going to be too deadly for MMA. I encourage you, you know, if you do Aikido or not, read the art of peace. There's a video on YouTube. There's a girl reading it and reciting it in front of you it takes like maybe 30 minutes and you'll be done with it uh, if, if you if you're not the type of person that sits down and uh, just reads aikido is the philosophy of shintoism and this peaceful mindset and becoming a better person manifested in those techniques in those drills in order for you to take them outside he, it it was never about you know self defense and etc read for example uh, christian tissier's definition of aikido in his club go to his club and you know choose the section of aikido he said he never said it's self defense uh, etc he says that taking something annihilating it and you know blending with it he never says it's self-defense he never says it's too dangerous he never says if you don't resist your hand will break none of that and if you see another thing is that well people say well i'm learning about angles and hip placement and moving someone with my hips and lower center of gravity all that stuff works in fights and so that must mean that it is like martial in some way. That's true. I've actually saw uh, a Muay Thai class. They were doing like they have like this tactical class once a week, I think. Uh, they were doing like a jab, and then you know you you put your gloves on the forearm and the tricep from outside, and then you go in with the knee. So you create an angle, and then you go in with the knee. It's it's very similar to how you create an angle and do like a kotegeshi, the wrist twist, etc. Uh, you know, you move someone with your hips, not with the strength of your forearms, uh, etc. All the bases for fighting, whether it is striking and grappling, in Aikido, it's there, but it's still not for that purpose. It's... Someone commented on one of my videos and it was a brilliant comment. They said that... They, they achieved like a black belt, I think, or like a second black belt, I'm not sure, but they said that 
you know, Aikido, it's all about fundamentals. You drill them in a very slowly again and again and again, but no sparring. That's like someone studying musical theory and learning to read music and appreciate music, but they're not a master pianist or a cellist or a violinist. And that's so true. Aikido is the same. You can appreciate uh, fighting and take the really peaceful mindset of someone that, okay, I'm a martial artist, but uh, I'm not here to hurt anyone. And I don't want to, I want to walk away from the fight. It really teaches you that stuff, but it doesn't teaches you, it doesn't teach you, I'm sorry, you know, to, you know, ground and pound or, you know, mount someone and really just unleash a barrage of submissions. But it teaches you the basis and fundamentals of movements, but in order to blend and create something, you know, unified and harmonious. So it is in a way a meditational practice. It is an art. It's not martial. I agree with that now. I know there are tons of people that, you know, they want to add some brutal uh, attacks, making it like a hybrid between Krav Maga and Aikido. Uh, and that's fine. But the Aikido, like towards the end of Osense's life, let's try to take it for what it is. And that's actually you know, re reuniting everything with everything. And for example, and when you go out of the mat, whatever life throws at you, you can blend with it and create the best outcome. You know, when Kron Gracie says, Jiu-Jitsu will save your life in more than one way, not just the physical. Everything that's not the physical Aikido can do that for you, but Unfortunately, it's just not meant for, you know, self-defense, all that stuff. Uh, this is the big misunderstanding that uh, people, you know, I feel that they have come across. It's actually manifesting the philosophy of peaceful Shintoism and also uh, someone that has seen war all their life and they just want to ex uh, express peacefulness through the stuff that they had learned. All he had known in his life was martial arts. So he truly wants to be like a warrior in a garden. But if you want to just do Aikido and expect yourself to be a warrior, then that's just not how it works. You cannot take uh, the level of his maturity towards the end of his life and try to apply it for someone that hasn't uh, gotten a bruise in their life. For example, I went through architecture school, I learned so many crafts, painting, uh, I wrote a book, etc. I cannot teach a 12-year-old the maturity I have now. They really have to go through what I had went through. You need to have to fight and really get your ass kicked if you want to achieve the maturity that Osensei has established and, and the maturity and level of awareness that he had reached. So if you want to do, have like a, a very long martial career and then retire in Aikido, then that would be the best scenario to practice Aikido. But taking it all on its own and saying, you know, I'm not going to show up, but I have nothing to prove. This is for me. And, you know, talking from ego, that's not how it works. And to here's why another misunderstanding and you see a lot of fragile egos in Aikido someone that have never sparred in their life they have like a third degree black belt but they're not gonna admit to themselves or to you that they're not fighters because you know it's a third degree black belt you know like what so you so you're saying I'm a third degree black belt but I cannot spar that's nonsense they're not gonna, their ego will not allow themselves to accept this fact. That's why so many people stay in their delusions. And the best decision I had ever made was leaving Aikido. It was the hardest thing for me to take off a black belt that I worked years to earn and wear a new white belt. But it's the best thing that I have ever done because I don't want to walk around in my delusions. I don't want to walk around in my doubts. You know, can I fight? What, if something happens, can I do it? 
no one knows but you can lessen the percentage of your doubts and also I encourage you to read the art of peace try to understand what the man the founder himself went through in order to create this art uh, he never claimed any of those things that you know it's the best self-defense uh, you can see he's talking about uniting things heaven and earth the attack was nothingness uh, it's a very it's a spiritual saying it's not like a Miyamoto Musashi and the book of five rings it's very against it so you can see that in a way it's going to uh, towards another direction uh, it's not about fighting or playing mind games and war games it's truly about take uh, practicing these martial techniques to better yourself not to spar but unfortunately you will not become a self-defense expert like Krav Maga or I don't know like Bruno Rosco etc uh, that's it um, I feel I am qualified to talk about this subject I had learned with the best I had gotten my black belt from the best I'm still in his club uh, but in different disciplines I love Sensei TCA he's the true definition of an Aikido master he's very humble when you talk to him it's almost like you're talking with a child he's that polite and that uh, transparent uh, sad that there are so many uh, jerks in Aikido because you know no one's kicking their asses to humble them sadly uh, I wish you know I wish these beautiful techniques and flips etc translated into something functional I wish I still look at Aikido demonstrations till this day and I say like maybe I can you know I'm working I should be like working for my second degree now but it's fine but you know I still look at it it's beautiful but you know you have to be real you know why are you training it if you want to train it to relieve the stresses in your life and truly know how to uh, take what life gives you then yes go do it but it's not for se but don't say I'm gonna learn it for self-defense that's that's what I'm trying to say learn about the founder why he he did it and also when he started training he trained high level black belts in judo other forms of jiu-jitsu etc he took people that already knew how to fight and then taught them you know he added the cherry on the cake or the icing on the top uh, this was Shadi and thank you for listening